Okay, welcome to Office Hours. It's my chance to meet founders and help them solve their biggest problem in the world with the underlying obvious charade of me buying 6% of their company. Okay, let's continue the charade that I'm trying to help people, (laughs) that I'm trying to help people out of the goodness of my heart when all I want to do is get on their cap tables as they build a unicorn and then get just just a tiny sliver of that glory when they go public or get bought. Jackson, uh, you're from Keyo. I am from Keyo. K-E-Y-O. And uh, using biometric ID to replace keys uh, and fobs and credit cards and all that nonsense. Yep. Show me what you're working with here. I, I see you're carrying a, a 3D printed prototype, I think. Am I right? Yeah. Very astute. This okay. is it. So you're at the 3D printed prototype phase. What do I do? I put my eye scan or is it a finger scan? What is it? You wave by it like that. And we look at about 5 million points in the vein patterns underneath your skin with infrared light and infrared imagery to identify you. And then Wow. We can... So wait a second. You're telling me I do the Jedi mind trick it's exactly and I the pass Jedi mind my trip. hand across this uh, little box that looks like an iPhone attached to a little retina scanner, but it's not a retina scanner. Yep. And you scan my handprint Correct. from what, six inches away? Uh, what is the fidelity? Three to four inches. Three to four inches. So yep. I do a Luke Skywalker mm-hmm. uh, Jedi mind trick. These are not the droids you're looking for. And the door opens. Yep. Can you make the door make a whoosh sound? You know in Trader Joe's, yeah. how they do different sounds in different seasons? Oh, they do? I didn't yeah, know that. like when you scan your credit card. Ah. We're going to do that. Got it. So this I've never seen in the market. Why have I never seen this? Is this a new technology? Yeah, so we've been in pseudo stealth mode. Um, We are bringing this to market right now. It took a lot of time and energy. Uh, I think you mentioned kind of getting lost in the in the woods yeah and a lot of this is all about being a stay up not a startup in my mind when yeah. you're doing really really big things and but does this technology this biometric this new level of biometric this is a new standard in the industry that's coming it's been historically expensive ah. and so we found a way to commercialize existing sensors Got in it. a way that big companies would buy them from us what will this cost to deploy at a at an office per door yeah, so we just brought in our first customer, Great. Uh, which is exciting. They bought 25 units at $1,300 each. What? And they're, and they're paying us about $1,000 a month. 25 units at $1,300. I'm yeah. assuming that's a break even for you yeah, with pro- installation? Um, approximately. Uh, does that include We're not installation? Losing money. Oh, you uh, lose money? We, no, we did not lose money. Break even. And we weren't installing them. You're not installing. No, they paid do they have party. to attach to the wall, or do you put it on a table next to the wall? How does it work? Because it, it's got an interesting footprint. I don't know exactly <laughs> how that's supposed to yeah. work, but if I had to put that on my wall, it'd be kind of large. Yeah. So there's a, a little bracket spot in the back there. Mm-hmm. So like a card reader or whatever. So it looks similar to that. Yeah, it installs really similarly. And then this is like the desk mounted. Oh, version. that's the desk mounted yeah. version we're looking at here. Okay. Yep. Um, so thirteen hundred bucks. Yeah. And when you make them at scale, if mm-hmm. you were to make a thousand of them in Shenzhen or Taiwan right now, what would they cost? Uh, Four hundred fifty. Okay, Four hundred fifty dollars at scale, so you could actually do that. That that's we're gonna go make a hundred, right? I think Got in it. two years we can get down to probably sub two hundred. So then the interesting thing becomes the software solution. So it's really hardware as a service, Hass. Yeah. So here's which is not the version of Hass you get when you have heated seats in your car. <laughs> Lest anybody be confused. There's that's a different Hass. That's hot ass. Yeah. What we're talking about here is hardware as a service. It's Hass. It's just as delightful because you get subscription revenue from a hardware product. That's what you're going to do, right? You know, Ten- you know what's really cool about that? People don't tear stuff off their walls very often. No. So the lifetime value could be very high. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I know this business really well because I'm an investor and on the board of a company called Density, which has a similar hardware as a service. Yeah. Uh, and I'm in um, Cafe X and I've got some scar tissue with other hardware companies. I know. <laughs> what's your question for me? What's your biggest challenge right now? Yeah. Jackson, which is Jason with an X. <laughs> is that right? Completely correct. Yep. Wow. Yeah, I get a lot of Jasons. Like if I, I were picking that. my... Is that your real name or did you uh, no, alter I, your I name? I totally made that up. Yeah, it was really? CKS when I was born. Yeah. Uh, it, wait, wait, no, no. They made it up for you or you did? My born name was J-A-C-K-S-O-N and I changed it to remove two it's letters. pretty awesome. Do you have Jackson.com? <laughs> I don't. I have JacksonKlein.com. Very nice. All right. Yeah. What's your biggest <laughs> issue? What's your biggest issue? What's yeah. the challenge? So here? broadly speaking, uh, we, where are you based? Uh, I'm right here in East Bay. And oh, the, fantastic. Yeah. A lot of our Oak team Town, is in Berkeley. Chicago uh, on a 54-foot sailboat in Emeryville Marina. Oh, respect. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, See, now I just want to let people know, when I hear so, uh, look, people are like, oh, why you ask these personal questions? When I hear like a personal little hack like that, I'm like, okay, this is an odd dude who <laughs> like is you don't wandering the desert and he lives on a boat. <laughs> But guys who live on a boat and gals who live on a boat, 
they are hackers because they figured out how to have the best of all worlds. They have beachfront, waterfront property, and they pay a fifth of what it costs y'all, and they can move at any time unless they bought a non-seaworthy vessel. Super seaworthy. You're seaworthy. Yeah. And it's the ultimate hack, isn't it? It is. And yeah. What does it cost you for your slip? Like 1200 a month? How the hell do you know that? Yeah, I've looked into it. It's exactly $1,200 a, weird, $1, a month. Because really? yeah. <laughs> I've looked into this madness because I wanted to get a boat. Yeah. Because it's a hack. I want to get a boat down in a marina mm -hmm. in uh, like San Mateo area. Yeah. I want to get a high speed boat. Yeah. So that I can commute to the city or Oakland or Berkeley so about we, 12 times a year. So we have VC on our dock. You have a VC on your dock. Multiple. Really? So I'm going to have to fight them and out. They, and for they do that. They do. They zip down. Yeah. Oh, such a great hack. Okay. I shouldn't have told them. <laughs> Edit this part out of the show, Sir Charles. Um, all right. What's your biggest challenge? Yeah. Um, broadly speaking, I think we're doing something really big. And, and I think there's a few parts of it that we haven't touched on. Uh, we have a lot of inbound interest, even though we try to stay out of the media and try yeah. not to do things except for this. Yeah. Um, inbound interest from investors or customers? No, customers. Great. Uh, and what we have not been able to achieve, I think, is taking that interest and quantifying it in a really interesting way going into a fundraising round, which we're about yeah. to do. Uh, and a lot of that is because the customers are larger than we can reasonably service right now, given the 3D printed nature of the product, the small nature of the yeah. team. The good news about that, though, is even if you had a customer, let's say like Google, mm -hmm. Who has too many store door fronts? Yeah. They would if they were going to test this, they would pilot it anyway. Yeah. So even though you can't service them, the first contract's going to be for ten doors anyway. Yep. They're not going to give you ten thousand doors. Yep. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. So you think pilots, POCs are a critical path, or well, how? I'll be honest. I there's enough here for someone like me to make an investment on a small scale mm. if you have one customer. Yeah. So and I'll tell you why. The degree of difficulty in the hardware. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> no, I'll tell you. <laughs> the degree of difficulty. I understand the degree of It's okay. You can cry. It's, I'll, I'll cry we'll right here. We'll be the first on this program. Usually people cry not because they're touched, but because they're beat up. So it's, <laughs> this is great. It's a first. Um, no, but the degree of difficulty in hardware, we all know, is super hard. Um, and so for you to get to market and get a customer who's paying 1300 a unit for 20 units, it's a very, that's enough. One, that's a significant pilot. That's not a bullshit it's uh, not oh, even sorry. a pilot. Let's just curse on my own pocket. <laughs> That's not a BS pilot. It's a legit pilot. How did you get it is the question I would ask. Hustling. <laughs> we took every opportunity we could say yes to. Okay, and close. One, and That's one of close those to a good answer. But did you call them or did they find out because you so they read a story on TechCrunch and then contacted you? We got you? on you stage them? every place we could. One of those was a plug and play event in got it. Mexico. So in Mexico, you did a pitch event, yep. and somebody in the audience said, "I want it." Yep, and they were, and you didn't drop the ball. They were the GM of a huge, like, new facility in Mexico or here? in Mexico. Yeah. Perfect. That's enough. All you need to do now is crush that one installation and have that person not shut up about it and yeah. have it work. They use it twenty thousand times. Oh, well, they've used it twenty thousand times. Perfect. So, so far. if it's perfect and it doesn't fail. I think like you should come to our accelerator. It's like a perfect kind of moment for you is to go to an accelerator um, and then go out to the venture community. That would be like the yeah. easy way for you to do it. Um, or if you want to skip the accelerator process, um, you probably need to get to three pilots or four pilots. So I think you have plenty for an accelerator to accept you. Yeah. For seed funds to accept you, they probably would want to make sure that it wasn't a fluke and that you had three pilots. So, so we, have, we, have more pi more. we have more pilots now of that scale though. This one was just a legitimate deal. It's every yeah. door, every turnstile in the building. Yeah. So it's the whole thing. You have two more pilots? Yeah, we have uh, additional pilots, including with like the largest uh, card brand, like credit card brand in the country. Yeah, so then fundraising becomes a full-time process for you for yeah. three to six months. So you have to be prepared for that. Yeah. Uh, we focus on that a lot in our accelerator, launch accelerator. Um, but you could do it yourself too, which means if you go through our accelerator you get introduced to well over 100 investors who hear your pitch, and then you basically just have to follow up with all of them and close two or three of them. Yeah. So you get to a close rate of, let's say, 1% to 3% and you're good yeah. uh, because then we would follow on with them in all likelihood, and you'd raise that 500 to $2 million seed round. Or you can do it yourself, which means you have to email, cold email 500 investors. Let's say 250 to 500. Mm -hmm. Of those, half will open it. Of those, half will reply. Yep. So in other words, you get 20% reply rate if you're lucky. 
So if you do 500, you might get 100 replies if you're lucky, if it's a really good pitch, like a video and a, mm. a bit about the product, uh, a bit about the traction. So let's say you get those 100 replies and then you convert the 100 replies into 20 in-person meetings and then you have to pray that you get five of them to take a second meeting and pray that you get past mark with two. So you're talking about 200 to 50, 250 to 500 reach outs. You have to follow up with almost all of them because nobody replies to the first email. You got to do like three replies. And that is why it's a six month process, I tell people. Mm -hmm. So just be prepared for that. And at yep. the same time, do you have a co-founder? Yeah, two. Perfect. So if you have a co-founder, you have to tell your co-founders, one person's going to focus on fundraising. One is going to focus on existing clients. Um, and pleasing them, and one is going to focus on the product, yeah. right? And you have a division of labor there that becomes very smooth. And the other two people have to step up if you're the fundraising one and say, the business is going to grow and be strong during that process. Yep. Make sense? Yeah, completely. I am delighted to have met you. This is a very compelling product. Thank you. Um, I appreciate and, that. And uh, kudos to I you. It's going to be a race to build the tools that matter uh, on the back end. So people are gonna yeah. really care about the tools. And so having that API, are you building an API for the back yeah. end? Because a lot of people already have authentication systems and the turnoff. What's great about this is you don't have the cost of badges or fobs. Yeah. And those fobs get very expensive and they get lost and they're a security concern and they're a management headache. Yeah. The good news is nobody's losing their hand, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully no business has to experience somebody losing their hand. Yeah. I, think I mean, it's pretty dark, but Luke Skywalker lost no, completely. His yeah, we, so I mean, it's kind of got a whole Luke Skywalker thing to it. I, I've I've tried that pitch before, and yeah, it, tur it turned people off. But I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty dark. Um, we'll know your audience. All right. Yeah. Well, All right. We're gonna we're gonna continue this conversation. I'm really okay. I'm really infatuated by what you're doing, and also that you live on a boat. Uh, all right. That, that's and the ultimate name. boat hack, by the way, is have friends with boats. I know. <laughs> what boat is the fastest boat that I could go in the bay? And is there a speed limit in the bay? I don't. People, you can go like. 45 or 50 miles. Oh, that's hour. fast. I, I know people going that fast. Yeah. What, what kind of boat goes 50 miles per hour? Is that like one of those little, uh, what do they call them? Scorpions or something? Uh, it doesn't need like to be with a lot. Four. You know, like there's one right by us. It has two like 400 horsepower engines that's on what the back. I want. It looks like a big Boston whaler. I'm sure it, it I want flies. one of those like so fast. It's <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. The problem is if you hit a wave wrong, you die. A wave you die? If you hit like, you know, you're going long, going long, there's ah. like a big wave and then you're in the air and then you kind of... Oh, yeah. No, out. I don't want to do that. So there's a safe speed you can go? Yeah. What is the safe speed you can go? 30s, maybe. Oh, 30s? Yeah. But still, as the crow flies between like East Bay and South Bay, you're fine, right? Compared How to traffic and bridges. How long would that take? What is that? 10 miles? It probably takes like 40 minutes or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I was thinking about to go to Warriors games or go to Oakland Airport. Like I would like to... This is what I would like to do. Get in at Santa Monica, San, San Mateo yeah. area. There's a bunch of marinas there. And zip over to the Oakland airport and park at the Oakland airport and take an Uber to my flight. No, I like all of it. Okay. Another business idea for you later. Yeah, exactly. All right. This. <laughs> okay. Thank well, you very much. More <laughs> to come on This Week in Startups.